Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration and my name is Gary and thank you for joining me this morning. As I'm coming to you live like I do every day from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains here in East Tennessee. Today is Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. And it is National Chocolate Souffle Day. You know, I don't think I ever had one of those. Might be something to try. If you can find out, find a chocolate souffle somewhere today, make sure you take time out and celebrate our day. Um, National Chocolate Souffle Day. Our scripture reading today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter number 12. And we're going to look at verses 7 through 17. And the title of the message today is, Do you expect an answer when you pray? Do you expect an answer when you pray? When you pray, do you expect God is going to answer? And do you wait for that answer? Do you seek that answer? Let's take a look at our Bible reading. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind thy sandals. And so he did, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out. And followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came to the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them on his own accord. And when they went out, and they went out, and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. As Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad, but she consistent, constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, Go, show these things unto James and unto the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Friends, we got an interesting story here, an interesting account. And, um, Again, I ask you, do you expect an answer when you pray? Let's look at the need. The need was that Peter was in prison. In verse number 5 of, of Acts chapter 12 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Peter was kept in prison. That was the need. There was a constant prayer. Prayer without ceasing, as verse 5 says, of the church unto God for him. The church was praying for Peter. The church was praying he would be released. They were praying most likely for his safety and for God to deliver him. And in verses 7 through 10, we see an answer to that prayer, that prayer that was made without ceasing. We see an angel came and woke up Peter and led him right out of the prison. And then departed away from him that was the answer to their prayer peter was let go proof of that answer comes in verses 12 through 17 
when Peter decided to go to the house of Mary where many were gathering and praying. And verse 13 tells us that Peter <clears throat> knocked at the door of the gate and a damsel came, a woman came named Rhoda. And she knew Peter's voice. She recognized his voice and told, ran in, told everybody how he's at the gate. Peter's at the gate. Peter, the one they're praying for, the one they're praying for his safety, for his release, is now standing at the gate. And these people should be rejoicing because God answered their prayer. But verse 15 says, they said, at the end of verse 15 says, then said they, it is his angel. It is his angel. It's easy for us to sit here today and say, what were they thinking? They were praying for Peter's release. They were praying that he would be released from prison. And there Peter is standing at the gate and they don't believe it's him. They say it's his angel. But let me ask you this. How many times are we guilty of the very same thing? How many times do we pray and ask God for something? But then we go out and we do something else or we go out and just figure, well, God's not going to get around to answer my prayers. So he must want me just to, to act on my own behalf. And, and, you know, it's stupid things like that is what we end up doing most of the time. And then in verse 16, we see that Peter continued knocking. And finally they came and opened the door and they saw him and they were astonished. They were surprised. They should have been worshiping God and thanking God for answering their, their prayer. But they were astonished that their prayer was answered. That doesn't put a whole lot of faith in God, does it? No, it don't. You know, I remember years ago an illustration I used when I was preaching one time. I told the story of this town that was going through a severe drought. And it was a rural town. A town that had a lot of farmers and a lot of farms on it. And they were going through a terrible drought. And, and crops weren't growing. They couldn't get hay and things for the, for the animals, the livestock. So at church one Sunday morning, the pastor announced that they were going to devote Sunday night service to praying for rain to come prepared. And that night, they had record attendance, people coming to the church to pray for rain. But amongst the hundreds that was there, only one person thought to bring an umbrella. That one person that brought the umbrella expected to hear from God, expected to get an answer to their prayer. But all too often, we just offer up prayers because it's what we good Christian people are supposed to do. So we offer up these prayers and we don't expect God to answer these prayers. So we pray for something and then we go out and we do what we think we ought to do instead of waiting for God to answer. These people were praying for Peter for his release from prison. And when his prayer was answered, they didn't believe the prayer was answered. They figured it was his angel. And when they saw it was Peter for themselves, they were astonished. Wow, God answered a prayer. When in reality, God answers all the prayers we pray to him. It just depends if we're looking for that answer or we're expecting that answer. So friends, when you sit down and pray today, most of us have a prayer list of people and things that we're praying for. Why don't we come to the throne of God expecting to hear something today, expecting him to answer our prayer? Why don't we come expecting God to answer that prayer? Why don't we come Why don't we come with a spirit of worship and thanksgiving and then listen for that answer? even if it isn't the answer that you're expecting or you want. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. 
Have a blessed day, and I encourage you to swing by our website, our brand new website, www.scripturelinks.org, scripturelinks.org. And you can, of course, listen to all the episodes of The Daily Dose of Inspiration and Talk in Scripture as well. Um, you can even you can even send us a message on there, a voicemail. And uh, if you do that, you never know. It might end up being played on one of our broadcasts. Um, so, got a comment, got a question, send us a voicemail. Let us know what it is. And um, while you're on the website, if you want to make sure that you never miss an episode, you could always subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts at. But if you don't want to do that, you can sign up and get our daily email. Um, that'll send you daily dose of inspiration right to your inbox each and every day. And so I encourage you to do those things. Swing by our website, www.scripturelinks.org. And uh, yesterday was National Strawberry Day. And I had asked uh, what dish contained, what's your favorite dish that contains strawberries? And one person answered my question, so I'm thankful for that one person. And they answered and said, strawberry shortcake. And I have to agree with them. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Daily Dose of Inspiration. Remember, subscribe to our podcast, like this post on Facebook, share it, subscribe to our podcast, send us a voicemail, let us know what you think, let us let me know of any questions you got, prayer requests you got, anything like that. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a blessed day. Mm-hmm.